Have you ever experienced an IV drip? If not on yourself, you've probably seen it used on someone close to you. A liquid directly entering your bloodstream instantly. But who came up with this idea? Let's rewind to the year 1658 when Sir Christopher Wren, yes, the architect of St. Paul's Cathedral, used a goose quill as a needle and an animal bladder as a container. He injected alcohol into a dog's bloodstream. He wanted to know, can we put liquid directly into the blood? It was an unethical experiment, but it marked the beginning of IV therapy. Fast forward to 1831, a cholera outbreak hit England. People were dying from dehydration. That's when Dr. Thomas Latta gave the first successful saline IV injection. He noticed collapsed veins filling up again. Heartbeats restarting. It was like bringing someone back from the dead. And the solution. Just plain water and salt, no filters, no safety standards. Then in the early 1900s, science caught up. Blood groups were discovered thanks to Carl Landsteiner. Glass bottles replaced animal bladders. Rubber tubes and steel needles were used. But infections were still a big problem. Then came 1950 Beckton Dickinson created the first disposable IV needle. That gave much better control and safety. By the 1980s, IV machines got smarter. Today, even though not available everywhere in India, we have digital IV systems that calculate dosage automatically. They trigger alarms in case of overinfusion. And now, we even have AI-powered programmable infusion pumps. Yes, IV therapy began with a questionable experiment. But today, it's a lifeline, like a thread connected to the body through which life flows.